All right, West Mitchell, Chris Clark, back here talking uh, our roster breakdown. And I tell you, it seems like we've already done a wide receiver breakdown because I would say among the questions we get on our live stream, um, I think the most common question we've gotten all offseason has been about who's going to step up at wide receiver. So if you watch our live stream, maybe some of this is, is old news. Hopefully there will be something new that you can take away. But – I would say, you know, I literally, Chris, I think we've talked about receivers so much at various points, be it podcast, live stream, on the message board. I actually had to go back and make sure we hadn't done the receiver section of our videos because I would say, honestly, we'll start big picture, then we'll sort of uh, pick away at it. I would say if you're talking big picture storylines, question marks, concerns, however you want to phrase it, the wide receiver position, and then the broader question of what happens at wide receiver is probably the biggest storyline, biggest question that South Carolina faces um, really for, for this entire season, I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even, man, when you look at, like, obviously there, there are some obvious ones with, like, quarterback, they've got to be better, but you feel like they've got some guys in place. Running back, you lose – four seniors and a lot of production, but the the arrival of Marshawn Lloyd on campus, um, you know, certainly helps you feel better about that. A couple of guys who are already out there, but receivers, the one that you can really point to. And, you know, when South Carolina lost Debo Samuel, you looked at the roster and said, okay, there's some young guys here. And then there's Shy Smith. And then there's, Hey, there's also Brian Edwards. But now you don't have Brian Edwards, um, who was one of the best receivers in school history. So now you look at it and you go, there's Shy Smith as a senior, and there's a lot of guys who um, have either have not done much for various reasons, or um, they've shown some promise, been derailed by injuries, or young or freshmen. I mean, there's just sort of a mismatch of all these different guys. Um, but what you don't have is that one guy who's been the proven sort of bell cow type of receiver. Smith's the closest thing to have to it. Looking over his stats, Wes, he's, he's actually got more career receptions than I even thought, just off the top of my head. But still, a, a position where a you got to get better, b you got to stay healthy, um, and and c really you just need some guys to step up there, you know, just in general to to become sort of the guy, whether it's in the rotation or in the starting uh, group. Yeah, you know, generally when we do these breakdowns, I think um, you kind of I would say categorize guys. Here are the knowns. Um, you know, even if it's a situation where maybe you need to got to step up a little bit, at least you sort of know what you're getting there, then here are the unknowns. I, I think you can sort of still separate them out to Shy Smith and then sort of everybody else. I, I think even though Shy Smith has not shown yet that he, um, you know, can be that number one guy yet, um, I tend to think, you know, you can go all the way back. I think for one – sometimes guys sort of slide into the role that is created for them. So Chai Smith really hasn't been expected to be the number one guy uh, last year, the year before. He's always sort of been, you know, he was the, the third guy um, to Debo and, uh, you know, and Brian Edwards on, on paper. Then he's sort of uh, supposed to be Robin if Brian Edwards is Batman type thing. And, you know, I, I think if, you, man, you can go back. I was thinking about this. I go all the way back. Till, you know, when, when I was in school at South Carolina, there is a history of guys stepping up at wide receiver. Um, you know, even back in, in the Lou Holtz offenses, Troy Williamson was sort of South Carolina's biggest receiver threat. And South Carolina loses him. You know, Steve Spurrier comes in, Troy goes to the NFL, gets drafted in the first round because he runs a 4-3. This guy named Sidney Rice steps up and wasn't some highly recruited guy, even though I think people in Gaffney knew he was pretty special. He steps up as an absolute star for South Carolina. Hopefully I'm going to get these right as far as the, uh, the progression. But after that, you would have had Kenny McKinley. And Kenny McKinley sort of um, was the Robin if Sidney Rice was Batman. And then eventually Kenny takes over and is the guy. Then Alshon Jeffrey is coming along. Alshon Jeffrey ends up being 
uh, one of the best receivers in school history. And, um, you know, he leaves early as a junior. And you sort of have this, I would say, where it wasn't any one guy, but Bruce Ellington, Ace Sanders, Nick Jones, some Shaq rolling in there. You had this group that just sort of all stepped up. And, though, I mean, if you look back, watching some of the videos during quarantine, of South Carolina's receivers in that 2012, 2013 um, sort of time window there. As a whole, there w there wasn't, you know, an Alshon Jeffrey left after he, you know, went to the NFL. But all those guys played well. They knew how to get open. They played within the scheme. They were quick. Um, they created problems. Then after that, you have Pharaoh Cooper. He emerges. And he's sort of, you know, there's a moment there where Pharaoh, it's Pharaoh Cooper and a bunch of walk-ons, literally. No offense to those other guys, but literally walk-ons in Farrow Cooper. Um, then, you know, at, at the time, some people sort of are wondering, you know, Debo Samuel had not emerged yet. Debo was on the roster, but he'd been injured, wasn't really a highly recruited guy. Boom, Debo Samuel emerges. Then, of course, Brian Edwards um, had already really emerged, but was the number one threat once Debo left. So just, I mean, you can go back. Every single year, South Carolina has a history over the last 15 years of somebody stepping up at the wide receiver position. Um, now, what exactly are the reasons for that? Does that necessarily mean somebody's definitely going to step up this year? No, but we've seen it happen time and time again. I tend to think now that Shai Smith is sort of being asked to be the guy, he's being put in a position to be the guy, He's shown he has talent. Uh, we've seen, I mean, we saw him, dude, he straight ran away from Tennessee um, early in the game last year. We won't talk about the rest of the game for uh, the fans' sake, but um, the guy has shown in flashes that he very much can be a really good wide receiver. I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure that he necessarily is going to catch as many balls as Brian Evers did last year, but I think you look at the ability, the position he'll be put in, and just the history of that at South Carolina, um, you know, may, maybe Shy does step up and just takes over uh, fully as the number one guy because I think that's the first step in this receiving core being um, being okay this year is that Shy has to maybe take another step forward, and then in a second we'll get into sort of the other guys. It's a great point. I think the question is, Wes, you know, can Shy be as good? in either a season in college or when you look at pro potential, can he be as good as some of those guys you mentioned? Because if I'm not mistaken, all the guys that you mentioned as having stepped up eventually made their way to the league, right? I mean, some of them longer than others, some of them higher draft picks than others, et cetera. But I think it's very fair. And there are a variety of reasons. Look, you, you might look at Shy and say, well, he, you know, he can catch as many balls as such and such on uh, who was the number three receiver for a couple of years on some team, but you also got to look at what's around them, right? So if your team has five or six really good wide receivers, you know, you can be super talented and maybe catch 20 or 30 balls in a season. You know, it just depends. Um, I think the biggest question for – one of the other questions for South Carolina, rather, is, you know, last season they weren't always – very good on offense. They went through times where they look pretty good and times obviously where they really struggle. Now, a lot of that has to do with injuries or quarterback play or scheme, whatever you want to put it on. But I think everybody's looking around and going, can Shy be more consistent? Can he be as good as those guys? You know, I'm glad you brought up Bruce Ellington because that was sort of one of the comps that was on my mind, you know, of him being a really good player. Um, but I wanted to compare those two, like, statistically, right, and, and maybe their final seasons or their final couple of seasons. And so, like, when you look at Bruce in 2012, he caught 40 balls, seven touchdowns. As a senior in 2013, he caught 49 balls, eight touchdowns. And he was actually the leading receiver that year in 2013. The second leading receiver was Mike Davis. And then Demir Bird, 33, Nick Jones, 27, Shaq Rowan, 25, right? So, shy. I mentioned earlier, I was sort of – I'd forgotten that his totals were this quote-unquote high. But, I mean, last year he caught 43, just two touchdowns. 2018 he caught 45 with four touchdowns, right? And so, um, obviously, that, that offensive year was a little bit better for South Carolina in 2018. So, there were more guys around him. And that, in turn, actually led to more opportunities for Shy. But now he's going to have plenty, you know. And so he's actually done some things in terms of production, but the question for him is can he take the next step to be the top guy like some of those that you've mentioned have? 
I think he's got the talent to do it, uh, but he's just got to become a little bit more consistent and he's got to be ready to take on that number one role because it's very important, I think, uh, that he does that this season. Yeah, and I, I think, man, if, if you went back and you just dropped Shy Smith into that 2012-2013 receiver room oh, yeah. know, and put him on the field, you know, with, with him and Bruce on the field at the same time or him and Ace or him and, you know, he, man, Shaq Rowland, honestly, probably talent-wise, one of the more underrated guys South Carolina has ever had. I, I think as far as what it could what could have been, if you want to talk about, uh, you know, if, if everything had worked out and maybe – he had, um, you know, maybe worked as hard as some of those other guys or, or just everything that worked out. I mean, super talented guy as far as just the baseline ability there. So, but, yeah, if you put Shy on the field with those guys, you know, and put him in an offense like that, then, you know, he would have caught 40 to 50 balls. But I, I think we probably um, would be talking about him a, a little bit differently than probably are right now because I, I think Bruce Ellington and those guys, I think we all knew watching them play that, they were really, really good. Just the ball was getting spread spread around a lot. So then the question becomes: All right, if if shy, uh, you know, if shy isn't sort of your your Brian Edwards, or your Alshon Jeffrey, your Sidney Rice, your true star number one. If he's more of like a number one who needs a bunch of guys around him type guy. If that's the case, then who around him is set to step up? Uh, I will say this again: I think the uh, you know, South Carolina getting Nick Muse back at tight end is a factor in all this. I think he will be a big part in the passing game. I think, um, you know, I think Marshawn Lloyd, from everything I've heard, can catch the football as well. I think every for this to work, everybody's going to have to be involved in the passing game because there isn't – even if Shai Smith steps up and is the number one guy and plays great, I still don't think there's a true, like, all-American type guy or first-team all-SEC type guy in this receiving core. So it's going to take everybody. Yeah. But then, you know, and we, we've – you can probably just click back to, to our, multiple of our live shows we've done on YouTube, and we've had the same conversation. But you're talking about – I mean, there's a list of guys in my head, and I would say, obviously, you throw to carry on Joyner in there. You throw Ortre Smith in there. You throw Josh Van in there. You throw Xavier Leggett in there. Um, Randricus Davis is the most forgotten guy, I think, on campus. Um, you know, those are the guys that come in my mind. We'll get to the freshmen in a second. But out of, out of that group, you're going to need – I mean, I, that was five guys, I think. You're going to need two to three of those guys to step up and prove they can go get open and catch the football. And that, that doesn't mean they have to catch 60 passes. I think it just they – have, they have to be a proven threat, and they have to – for one, be healthy in a lot of these cases. Um, you know, some of it just has been stuff that's completely out of their control. With Xavier Leggett, it's about continuing to polish at the receiver position. Um, or Trey Smith, help. Drink Davis, help. To carry on Joyner, moving from quarterback to receiver, um, polish up your skills there. So I think there are, with every single one of those guys, there's a reason to feel like there's a chance they could have a big year. But then there's a question. Basically, if you listed them out, you could put a pro and a con, you could put a positive, and you could put a question mark at every single one of those guys. No doubt. And I mean, look, you don't, you mentioned, you know, a bunch of guys catching 60 balls, and, and you know, you don't have to do that. I mean, that 2013 team that we've talked about scored 34 points a game and went 11 and two, um, and they were in the top. 30 to 40 in the country. They, they weren't incredible. They weren't an elite offensive team, but they're pretty doggone good. Um, and, you know, they had Connor Shaw and Mike Davis and, you know, uh, Brandon Wild, Fer a young Farrow Cooper, you know, on that roster and Demir Bird, Nick Jones, you know, Bruce Ellington. So Bruce Ellington at 49 receptions was the leading receiver. And again, Mike Davis second, 34 receptions. So it's not like the room. The room obviously had some really good players in it. But it's not like they put up tons of production. Connor Shaw was under 2,500 yards. You know, they, they got it done by playing good defense, and they had some pretty good offensive performances. And, and they took care of the ball for the most part. That's what you got to look for for South Carolina. There, there shouldn't be an expectation. I know nobody's saying this, or at least I hope not. shouldn't be this expectation of now that Mike Bobo's in town and maybe they're a little bit more settled and they've got some receivers with some promise that now South Carolina needs to expect to score 40 points a game. It's just silly, you know, but – they, they should expect to be more consistent, 
you know, take better care of the ball, play better at those spots. And so that is, that is the key to all this, Wes. When I look at this roster, and I've said this before, I really feel like they've recruited at least a little bit better than what we've seen so far. Okay. When you look at a guy like Xavier Leggett, I think he has pro potential. Note, I did not say he's going to be a first round pick. Remember that guy that said that we said everybody was going to be a first rounder a while back. But when you look at his size, his ability to run, his raw ability, if he develops, he could eventually be a guy that could go play in the pros. And you can't say that about everybody in the room. I think Josh Van's got more potential than what he's shown. He had a bad sophomore slump last year. To carry on joiners, very intriguing. Some of the freshmen, even Randrikas Davis, can he stay healthy? He's played some. So like you said, or Trey Smith, I mean, you go back to his freshman year, but he hasn't been healthy. There's just some guys who have either done it in spots or they haven't been able to do it because of injury or they're too young like Xavier Leggett in tough circumstances. Just a lot of questions. And so the key is going to be can they do enough around those guys and then can those guys individually develop to become a collective better unit? Well, and I, I'll tell you, the thing about Ortre Smith is that we sort of forget – I mean, he caught, let's see, 30 balls. Yeah. Yeah. He caught 30 balls for 326 yards and three touchdowns, including a long of 28, as a true freshman. And then the injury stuff, um, well, I don't even know if you caught an injury, just the he had to have surgery because of a um, an issue that uh, just w- was there. It was just uh, – it wasn't something that happened to him. It was um, – what's the word I'm looking for? It was genetic. Yeah, it was a genetic was issue. Before, yeah. With a genetic issue. So. Um, yeah, and that that's unfortunate for him. He sh- he showed as a freshman, you know, what he was capable of. And, you know, I, I remember I got reports that sort of this time last year or, or a few months from now last year when fall camp had started. And, uh, you know, I, I think they sort of had him on a pitch count a, a bit as far as what they were doing with him. But, you know, I had heard that Ortre Smith at times looked like Brian Edwards on South Carolina's practice field. And uh, just that he was making plays, was um, putting himself in a position to be one of the guys. And I, I think that the injury sort of continued to hold him up last season. But if he's back, if he's able to sort of get back to that, quote, 100% to where he was before, then all of a sudden he's easily one of the favorites to step in there you know, and, and play a bunch. And if that happens, I think that almost relieves some stress on this question a, a little bit because if you have him and Shy, then you really only need one other guy to, to sort of step up, at least as far as your starters go. So I, I think with him, it's not really a question of ability. It's just, is he back to 100%? Uh, then you sort of go down the list. Uh, you know, Leggett, like you said, he has, has NFL talent. To me, that's the guy that – there's probably the most pressure on right now as far as his ability and South Carolina's need, where those two things sort of uh, intersect. They really need him to have taken a big step from freshman to sophomore year. We saw we saw flashes last year, but we also saw reminders, you know, that he was a true freshman who did play quarterback as a senior in high school and is just sort of raw at, at that position. So I, I think, you know, you sort of go down the list I, when people ask who's going to be the guy um, other than Shy, I struggle to actually answer that question for them, even if I, I even struggle to put percentages on that because there are so many what ifs. Yep. I tend to think if Ortre Smith is back to his old self, then I, I think he's actually very much in that rotation as a starter. If he's not, then you know, you unfortunately sort of go on to the next guy. Um, I think Leggett is probably – I would say there's a very good chance he's one of the starters, just in my opinion. Um, then, you know, the third spot, like I said, depends on his or trade. Healthy completely or not, how far does the carry on Joyner? You know, how much has he come along? And then Josh Van, um, can he take – you know, can he get back sort of what we thought he was when he signed with South Carolina? So. I mean, I, I don't know if you have an answer, man, but I, I struggle to even sort of uh, put percentages or, like, a lot of positions you can sort of break it down. You know, defensive tackle, we said there's three guys for two spots, and this is how it sort of plays out. 
But with this position, I just really struggle to even, like, break it down into how it may play out. Yeah, I think we can pick, you know, because if you count, hey, could a freshman come in and really make some noise? Maybe. And so I think you could pick maybe six or seven guys for, you know, you think about three starting spots, you know, if, if you go that route. Um, and, I, and I do feel like you, you feel pretty comfortable about saying Shy is going to be one of them simply because he's been the most productive. And, you know, I mean, you know, you feel comfortable about that. But beyond that, it's tough. I mean, what's sort of your configuration? Would you pick to carry on Joyner, who's barely played the position in college, over a guy like Josh Van, even though Josh has got, you know, to take a step forward, obviously. That's tough. And so I think that's why spring was going to be so significant for this position. Now, they did get in a third of it, which was nice. Um, but the, these, you know, OTA-style you know, workouts and the player run practices and, and preseason camp, it's going to be huge for these guys for that position just to individually develop. And, and I feel like at some point, you know, the cream will rise to the top, so to speak, to where they'll be able to, you know, have a better assessment and we'll have a better feel for it. But right now, man, it's, it's really difficult, like you said, to sort of peg that this far out with so many unknowns. Yeah, and so uh, we'll get into the freshman. I think you know, the freshmen definitely have a chance to come in and play. Um, the X factor there, you know, I would say would be a guy like Jaheim Bell, who is really more, you know, is he technically a tight end? Is he technically a receiver? I, I think he's probably technically a tight end. But, he, you know, he told us when he enrolled, you know, when he was about to enroll that he was going to see time in, in both rooms. So I think as far as, you know, how you categorize him doesn't really matter. I think Jaheim Bell will have a chance – much like Eric Shaw, they'll have a chance to help in the passing game if you want to talk about it in more of a broad sense. But at the specific wide receiver position, I mean, I, I think, you know, Jakari Caldwell, obviously you have a three-man class. Jakari Caldwell, Rico Powers, Mike Wyman. Um, the two guys that I think we hear the most about would be Rico Powers and um, Jakari Caldwell is having a chance to come in and play and help this team and, uh, you know, make some plays. And I think the the, the talent is there. That's pretty much clear. But – the question with, with freshmen is always, can they get, uh, you know, mentally up to the point to where they're comfortable, uh, you know, within this offense, doing all the things that, you know, adjusting plays on the fly, knowing the terminology, knowing all the audibles, and then just starting to learn the intricacies of getting open against SEC defensive backs as opposed to, you know, high school defensive backs where in the case of most of these guys, you know, with Jakari, you're probably taller and faster than almost every defensive back you faced. Uh, Rico Powers, I would say you're probably quicker, faster, and stronger um, just looking at his body type than most of the defensive backs he faced in, in high school. So there is a sort of time period there where you're, there's an adjustment period. But, um, you know, how quickly can they pick everything up is going to be a big question. Because, you know what I thought was very interesting – if you want to go back, dude, Mike Bobo, when he asked about his – he was asked about the offensive scheme, he gave – this was in the spring. He gave the, you know, the answer he's been giving since the beginning, which was that the players are going to sort of determine what the scheme looks like, what the play calling looks like. But he even went a step far, farther in the spring. He said the guys that aren't on campus yet are going to have a – are going to play a major role in determining – what this offense is going to look like. For a coach to sort of look ahead and talk about the guys that aren't on campus yet, um, to me that, that means that there's a very real opportunity for these guys that have just gotten in. Um, of course, at the time they weren't on campus yet. Now they all are. Um, there's a real opportunity for these freshmen. For sure. And, I mean, I think that's part – I think two things there related to that point that you made, and that is, number one, so much uncertainty is that things are open. If South Carolina returned three or four receivers that had a bunch of experience and proven talent, we might still be able to say, yeah, these, you know, the freshmen are talented and maybe they could get on the field a little bit, but we wouldn't be sitting here talking about how big of an impact they could have, and that's related to that uncertainty and the sort of lack of proven production coming back. And then secondly, you know, they are high on, on – this group, you know, some of the offensive players in the group, whether you look at running back with Lloyd, some of the other guys are bringing in, 
you look at tight end, you look at receiver, you know, um, and really across the class. I mean, this is a pretty well-rounded class, and we've heard plenty to indicate that the staff is pretty happy with that. And I think Mike Bobo, from what we've heard, has been pretty happy with what he saw on tape in high school. Remember, some, some of these guys are already committed, et cetera, by the time he got hired. So, you know, he's apparently been happy with that, with the skill sets. And so all indications are they are going to get, you know, a heavy look. And, you know, how much – That'll just play out, I think, in preseason camp and everything. But uh, they're going to have an opportunity. Yeah, no question. And um, hey, th this is a this is a question that's going to be asked, frankly, until until we see it play out. So um, you know, we'll break it down as well as we can for you. If you have questions, um, throw them you know in the comments section or put them on Gamecock Central. But um, yeah, more more questions than answers right now at receiver. But at least we do know the major players here, who to watch, and we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. For Chris Clark, I'm Wes Mitchell. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, of course, hit the subscribe button on our Gamecock Central YouTube, and come on over to GamecockCentral.com and subscribe to us there as well.